Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again with the all new GPD WinMax 2. And today we're going to be adding an external GPU to this device to make it a full fledged gaming PC. Now we could definitely turn this into a 4K gaming monster with a more powerful GPU and I actually thought about doing that. But I wanted to keep it more realistic with an accessible GPU. But once we have everything set up here, we're going to be able to run all of our favorite AAA games at 1440p Ultra. There might be a few, we have to drop a few settings down to high. But in the end, we're going to see some really great performance out of this setup. This is actually the Intel version of the GPD Win Max 2. We've got the i7-1260p, 12 cores, 16 threads. It's got a max clock up to 4.7 gigahertz. And this is actually paired up with LPDDR5 RAM. We've got 16 gigabytes of it running at 5200 megahertz. When it comes to the internal GPU, we've got built-in Iris Xe graphics, but we're not going to be utilizing those in the video. We're going to be using an NVIDIA RTX 3060. So on the go, we can use the built-in integrated graphics and get some really great performance. But when it's time to get home, we can dock this with our eGPU dock and just up that resolution and settings and everything we want to play. So yeah, I've been having a blast with the GPD Win Max too. I personally love the form factor here. That built-in screen is absolutely amazing. And for on-the-go gaming, it offers some really great performance. Now keep in mind that this is the Intel version with that Intel Alder Lake i7-1260p. And we've got Thunderbolt 4 here. I've had a few people ask to test out an eGPU. And originally, I was going to go all out with something like a 3080 Ti. But then I thought about it, and I figured I'd test a more easily accessible GPU, like the RTX 3060. This is a non-Ti variant. And yeah, I did test out a few games on the 3080 Ti, and it's crazy. I mean, we can definitely do 4K gaming. But when it comes to this RTX 3060, it's more suited for, you know, high-end 1080p, 1440. And basically, all I'm going to do here is go ahead and plug in my eGPU dock. By the way, this is an older Sonnet eGPU dock. It's Thunderbolt 3. I've just plugged into the Thunderbolt 4 port on the GPD Win Max 2. And we've got the bigger monitor plugged into the RTX 3060. Now, it is possible to use this RTX 3060 on the built-in screen for the GPD Win Max 2. But I've noticed that performance is about cut in half due to the bandwidth. So what we want to do here is use an external display to get as much as we can. And the performance of this RTX card will still be limited given that we're running over Thunderbolt 3. But I think with what we have here, we should be good for 1440p gaming. Alright, so I wanted to give you a quick look here. As you can see, we've got that i7-1260p. This is going to be running at 35 watts. 12 cores, 16 threads. We've also got that LPDDR5 running at 5200 megahertz. We can still access the Iris Xe graphics, but for this, we're strictly going to be using that RTX 3060. Keep in mind, this is a non-TI variant, and I'm not going to be doing any overclocking. So with all that out of the way, I want to jump right into some testing and show you what this thing can do. We're going to go with Forza Horizon 5, and then I just want to give you a comparison between the benchmarks with and without the GPU. And of course, we will get much higher scores with this desktop GPU connected. But after that, we're going to test some more games and a little bit of emulation. Okay, so here we have Forza Horizon 5. I'm at 1440p. We'll get into the settings. I'll just show you real quick. 1440p, no resolution scale, and we're at high settings. So yeah, I also tried this at Ultra 1440p, and I only got an average of around 62 FPS. Now I'm sure with a few Ultra and high settings, we could go ahead and turn VSync on and run this at a constant 60. But in my opinion, the high settings in this game still look amazing, especially at a 1440p resolution. And as you can see here, we're getting an average of 82 FPS out of this. And on average, the i7-1260p is only pulling 28 watts. So of course, we're getting much better performance with this external GPU, and I did run a couple benchmarks just for fun. When it comes to 3D Mark Night Raid, with the built-in Iris Xe graphics, we got a total score of 17,857, but with the RTX 3060 over Thunderbolt, we got a 37,365. Really great jump in performance, at least on the GPU side of things. And the final one I ran here was Time Spy. So stock with the integrated graphics, 2017. With the eGPU, 8,175. So yeah, I mean, I knew we were going to get much better scores here due to that more powerful GPU. But now it's time to test some more games on this thing. 
we've got God of War 1440p high settings with some DLSS magic on. I've got DLSS set to quality and I can get an average of 72 FPS out of this. Looking really good here at 1440p, but if it was up to me I'd probably just go to Ultra, 1080p, and lock it at 60. Here's The Witcher 3, and going into this I was pretty sure we'd be able to run this at 4K high settings on the RTX 3060, so that's exactly how I have it set up right now. I haven't seen it dip under 60, it does get close in some cases, but overall we're getting some really decent performance out of this given that it's running at a 4K resolution. Cyberpunk 2077 is another one I always like to test, and with this I did go down to 1080p. If you try to run this on your PC, you know how hard it can be on a system. But we're at medium settings with no ray tracing on, 1080p, and it's really playable like this. We could go through and just mix and match those medium and high settings and have a really good time with this game. Next up, we've got Halo Infinite. Whenever I test this game on a new system or new hardware, it's always pretty impressive, because when it was first released, I wasn't getting great performance on basically anything that I tested it with. But lately, with all of the new performance patches that they've added, even on APUs, you can get some pretty good performance out of this. Right now, we're at high settings, 1080p, and I'm getting an average of 91 FPS. I also wanted to show off a little bit of emulation that struggled on the internal GPU. When it comes to the CPU, we've got plenty of power for basically anything you want to throw at it. But there are a few emulators out there that really favor NVIDIA GPUs, like Xenia, the Xbox 360 emulator. I've always had really good luck with NVIDIA GPUs, and here we have Forza 2, so this is an Xbox 360 game being emulated. And on the internal graphics, we can average around 28 FPS, but with the RTX 3060, we can get well over 60 FPS, and I do have VSync off just to show you exactly what it can do. But it doesn't mean that every single Xbox 360 game is going to run at full speed, and it really comes down to the emulator itself. It's still really early for this emulator. Here's Red Dead, and this will run at a constant 30, fully playable like that, but with VSync off, you're hard pressed to hit 60 with it. So it's no secret that I've always been a big fan of external GPUs, whether you're running them over an M.2 slot, Thunderbolt, or just kind of rigging them up whatever way you can to get them to run on a certain system. And when it comes to all of these newer handhelds being released in 2022, the beginning of 2023, we're seeing a lot of them with USB 4 and Thunderbolt, which is a big plus. I know not everybody has a Thunderbolt dock, but they are getting pretty cheap if you want to pick one up refurbished on eBay. I'll leave a few links in the description. And it's really cool because with the handheld, we've got integrated graphics, we can play our games on the go, we might have to sacrifice resolution, maybe a little frame rate, but then when it's time to really get down to business, we can plug this right in and up that resolution. And like I mentioned, you could go 4K Ultra with all of this stuff with the correct GPU attached. But yeah, definitely works, and I had a few people asking. I figured I'd go ahead and make a quick video. GPD is launching a Kickstarter for the Intel Alder Lake version with the 1260p, the one you saw in this video, and they've also got a Ryzen 7 6800U version, which hopefully I can get my hands on soon to do some testing with. But we'll definitely have to check out USB 4 connectivity just to see if we can connect an eGPU to the Ryzen version. So if you're interested in seeing videos like that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about the performance of this thing with the eGPU attached. And like always, thanks for watching.